or uh or something like that yeah just type amen okay who's ready for the word let's pray gracious god we thank you for this day we thank you because your word declares that this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it god we ask oh god that you would just meet us here tonight oh god that you would just be with us inside of this moment oh god as we begin to delve inside of your word oh god for there are so many questions that we have about your word but we hope oh god that you will speak through me oh god to bring clarity to this season and what this season is about. It's in your name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So listen, I'm sure you all have already gotten the um, uh, the text message from me or you've seen the uh, Facebook uh, post that I did. But I was thinking, I was thinking, Devin, and Joel, you're really going to love this as a seminarian. Because like I said, I've been, I've been really challenging myself to truly teach things that I learned getting my master's degree, getting my PhD, that the average person will never even think about or ever even consider about the Bible. And there's one particular scripture, there's one particular scripture that we always like to uh, hone in on, Sister Johnson, as it relates to this holiday season. Indeed, when I tell you that some of the things that God showed me inside of the scripture for tonight I think they're going to be eye-opening and encouraging, but then it's also going to make us really step back and center ourselves with regards to what the true meaning and message and representation of this holiday season is really about. So listen, we're going to the book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter, book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter, and we're jumping all the way down, jumping all the way down to the 14th verse. Now, Joy... This is a um, uh, this is a text that a lot of people refer to in connection with Jesus and the Old Testament prophecy of the coming of the Messiah. Now, one of the things that I have learned and seen, and you all probably got my uh, text, uh, Devin, and you saw where I said, you know, that 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 this that that tonight's power word is really not for, you know, the Jews, I mean, the Christians. We, we, can I explain that just for a minute? Because, Sister Johnson, the truth of the matter is Christianity within itself, those who differ, those who celebrate Hanukkah versus those who celebrate Christianity, Christianity is an offspring. Christianity is a, um, is a byproduct of Judaism. So truth of the matter is, had Jesus not come here on earth, and we have this theology, I can do a whole 10 week uh, lesson on this. And we have this theology about Jesus, this understanding about Jesus. To be quite frank, Glenn, uh, we all would probably still be Jews. We all might have adopted this Jewish philosophy of understanding God. And it's nothing wrong with that. Watch this, there's nothing wrong with that. Now, here's the thing. Devin, I don't want people to hear me tonight saying that I'm just, you know, throwing Jesus out of the Christmas equation. I'm not throwing Jesus out of the, out of the Christian equation. Joel, what I want to identify tonight is truly what the Old Testament prophets were really pointing us into, to really um, utilize with the Old Testament prophets were really kind of, you know, pointing us in the direction of. Since so Johnson, check the volume on your device and make sure uh, that it's on. Now, now here's the thing. The book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter and the 14th verse, I'm telling y'all, I'm not going to be long. I'm going to be about 10 minutes and then I'm going to let y'all go to let y'all, to let this marinate with y'all. Because we always go to this, because the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse, it says, all right then, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Now, Joel, one of the lovely things that I love as far as seminary study is doing word studies. And there's one word inside of this entire scripture that I believe that we need to look at, but look at it inside of a very, very different perspective. Are y'all still with me? Dean, the word is Emmanuel. 
And now I know we've got the songs, Joy. You know, we always sing that song, you know, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. You know, we, we always we always sing these songs about Emmanuel. We always get, you know, excited when the pastor or the preacher, you know, talks about Emmanuel and God with us. The Hebrew, and I know one of the questions that y'all are probably asking is, well, is it E-M-M-A-N-U-A-L or is it I-M-M-E-A-U-A-L? The, 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 the truth of the matter, here's the thing. The, the truth of the matter is that whether E or I, it does not matter. Because in original Hebrew text, Jewel, you never utilize vowels. Can I teach tonight? Can y'all just give me seven more minutes to teach? See, inside of the original Hebrew language, there are no vowels. There is no A, no E, no I, no, there, there, there's no U, there's no, there's no Y. So whether or not you spell Emmanuel with an E or with an I, guess what? It really does not matter because it was never inside of the original Hebrew text. Now, here's the thing. This whole notion of God with us, I always had a problem. I always had a problem, Shamir. I always had a problem, Shirley, um, with regards to this notion that Jesus coming in the form of a baby is now God with us. The truth of the matter, Devin, is that God was with the people of Israel, was with the Davidic line even before Jesus came on the picture. Here's the thing. Just because, <laughs> thank you, just because Jesus was coming does not mean that God went anywhere. See, because the presence of God, watch this, watch this, the presence of God Glenn, inside of the Old Testament showed up in so many different ways. The Bible says inside of the book of Genesis that, 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 that Adam and Eve heard God walking inside of the garden. Noah on the boat, the presence of God showed himself in the form of a dove to say, hey, you can, you, you can now enter onto land. The presence of God inside the Old Testament as it relates to uh, the tabernacle, the tabernacle was literally built around this place to where it was believed that the presence of God dwelt. And if you entered inside of the presence of God and you were not complete, you were not whole, you were not what you were supposed to be, the Bible says that you would literally drop dead. So here's the thing. Jesus is not the only presence of God inside of the biblical text. We see inside the Old Testament, we have this far away, aloof, um, Yahwistic is what they call it. It is this Yahwistic God that we see. And then we have Jesus inside of the New Testament who makes this incarnate physical representation of God. And then Jesus leaves us who? Put it inside of the comments. The Holy Spirit as the spiritual representation of God. But now here's the thing. God was already with us. And just because Jesus came does not mean that God went away. Now there was. Now here's the thing. Now Isaiah. Now what's interesting inside of this text, Devin, is that Isaiah is a prophet. God is still speaking to the prophets inside of this season of prophetic language, okay? When you have Isaiah, Ezekiel, Hezekiah, Obadiah, Zephaniah, when you have all those prophets, God is still speaking. Now, there is an event that took place in between the Old Testament and the New Testament, and it was considered to be the years of silence from God. Am I teaching tonight, Joel? Because it is believed, theologically speaking, that there were 400 years in which God spoke to no prophets. There was no prophetic word. 400 years when nobody heard from God. 400 years where God was not speaking to anyone. And we don't see the pickup until Jesus arrives on the scene. I see you, Joy. Now watch this. What God dropped inside of my spirit is that a silent God does not equate a non-present God. I feel like teaching tonight. Shamir, a silent God does not mean a non-present God. And I don't know who needs to hear it tonight. But you might believe that God is being silent. You've been praying all year. You are coming to the end of the year. And you've been asking God and asking God and asking God and seeking God and seeking God and seeking God and not hearing from God and not hearing from God and not hearing from God. And God has not said anything back to you. My son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, I want you to know 
that just because God is silent, it does not mean that God is not present. I see you, Debbie. And just because God was silent over this 400-year gap between the Old Testament prophets and Jesus coming on the scene, guess what? God was, God, God was present because God can't go nowhere. God was still, watch this, sustaining his people through those 400 years in order to bring about Jesus. How do I know this, Aunt Dot? How do I know that God was with the people of Egypt? I mean, how, how do I know that God was with the Israeli people? How do I know that God was with the people over those 400 years in order to get Jesus? Because at the end of the text, it says, well, well, number one, I asked the question, I said, who is God with? And when you do the theological um, uh, studies, Emmanuel literally represents the fact that Jesus, the governing body, was going to be with the Davidic line, D-A-V-I-D-I-C-K, the Davidic, or in other words, the lineage of David. Can I just have three more minutes, Devin, because this is going to blow your mind when I share this. Surely, when it says that a virgin would bear a son and would call his name Emmanuel, and he would save the house of David, he would preserve the house of David. What happens later inside of Matthew, and I believe it's only in Matthew, y'all need to, I need to check my, my, my PhD real quick, but I believe it's only inside the book of Matthew that literally gives you this succession from Adam to Jesus. Joel, literally, it gives a family history, family tree from Adam to Jesus. Now, within that family history, God leaves, or not leaves, or God becomes silent for 400 years. But the family history is still preserved and Jesus is connected to David's Davidic line. I promise y'all I'm done in three minutes. This thing shook me to my core. Glenn, the book of Matthew gives us this lineage from Adam to Jesus. And within that lineage, we know that G we know that God was silent for about 400 years or about 10 generations because generation was, was anywhere between 40 to 45 years. Am I teaching tonight? So for 10 generations, God was preserving the line. <laughs> for 10 generations, God was preserving the line just to get to Jesus. Your power word on tonight is that I don't care what the prophetic message might have been over your life. And if you believe that God is with you or is not with you, know that even inside of God's silence, your lineage, your blessing, the thing that God wants to bring you into is still being preserved. And I want to, I, I, I just want to note, this is just the theologian in me as I prepare to let you all go and I'll see you all inside of the new year. Because the question ultimately that I asked tonight is that if there were no Jesus, what would the world look like? The truth of the matter is this. The truth of the matter is this. It could have been Jesus. It could have been uh, Ray Ray. It could have been uh, Antoine. It could have been, I'm trying to think of non-biblical names. It could have been uh, Thaddeus, uh, which is still a biblical name. Uh, it could have been uh, Daniel, which is still a biblical name. I'm trying to think of non-biblical names, y'all. Y'all y'all help me out. Put some, put some boy non-biblical names in there. Here, here's the thing. Anyone, any child that was born of Joseph's, even without the immaculate conception of Mary, right, Joy, it could have been Pookie. Even without, ludicrous, there we go. Thank y'all, thank y'all. Give me some boy names. Even without the immaculate conception of Mary, 
any one of Joseph's firstborn sons would have still preserved the Davidic lineage because he was still connected to King David. And I want you all to know, I want you all to know that even if Jesus, now, like I said, now y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't, please don't, please don't let me go. Y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't take me viral for trying to throw Jesus out of Christian, or for, for, for trying to throw Jesus out of, um, uh, out of Christmas. But I want you all to know that even if Jesus did not make it to this world, guess what? We would still have God's love. And you would still have hope in a savior. Because honestly, that's what the Jewish community realizes, is that they still have God's love. And they still have hope that God will one day be with them or they will one day be with God. So like I said, I'm not, I'm not throwing Jesus out of the equation. No, 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 no. Please don't hear that. Please do not hear that. I want you all to hear that, guess what? With or without Jesus, God still loves you. That with or without Jesus, God still cares for you. That with or without Jesus, you still have a God who will hold you, who will keep you, who will preserve you, who will lead you, who will guide you. So to answer the question, theological, our word question tonight, what would the world be like if Jesus were not born? It would probably look very similar to what we have today. Because we still, I don't care how you view Jesus, you still have God's love and a hope and a peace that passes all kind of understanding. Let me pray for you. Gracious God, we thank you for this power word tonight, oh God. We ask that you would just let it rest and settle within our spirits, and our souls, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you will just allow it just to teach us so much about what we need to learn about ourselves. Yes, Jesus was such a very pivotal part inside of this scenario and inside of this narrative of humanity, oh God. But let us not forget that you were the creator of it all and that you will sustain us through it all. And that, oh God, even when we don't hear you, oh God, even when we don't feel your presence, God, you were still with us. Yes, Jesus came to be your incarnate Emmanuel, your incarnate human form of God with us. But God, you still show up for us every single day. God, you still show up for us in our, in our finances, in our health, in our relationships, in our career. God, you still show up for us every single day. So let us not forget to thank you for showing up inside of our lives. It's in your name that we pray. And everybody just type Amen. I'm going to see you all inside of the new year. I've got a great and wonderful series that is coming up that I hope and pray is going to bless you tremendously. You all have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and I will see you all soon. Peace and blessings.